Hello y'all, this is Brushfire Wind Dragon, and welcome to the Blackwell Legacy. This was actually a gift from Miss Roja for my birthday this year, and I'm very grateful for it. Seems to be the sort of game I would really enjoy. And I also still have those uh, games from Bear, who also gave me Frog Detective, and I, I need to play those too. Now that I have a working computer, I can do it. Okay, there's no... That is still pretty loud, isn't it? I have turned the volume down. I don't know if that helped you any, or just me. Um... So I like being enveloped in the sound, that's pretty cool. So I'll just go ahead and start. Would you like to activate in-game instructions is what I think I, it says because my recording bar is over it. Okay. Yeah, I do like that. Day one. That's not right. Is it? Well, that's not right at all. Let's try again. Okay. In addition to on-screen instructions, you can view the instructions by clicking the help button on the option screen. Day one. So, I guess this is it. This is better. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure. I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Oh, those are ashes. Wherever you are. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Interacting with objects. To interact with objects or characters, I'm guessing, because this recording bars over it. The mouse cursor over them and left click. There is a strange kid standing in front of Rose's door. Try interacting with him to see what he wants. Teenager. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? Huh? Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right, Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. 
I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. I don't like this guy. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason. Thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True. But I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. Okay. okay. I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. It did not sound like it was written. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. She lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You could look for her there. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. <sighs> How long is this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days. Depend on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. I'm not gonna threaten a violence that... I'm already mad at him. I'll I be don't... back. See you around. Him. Oops. I made the mistake of not reading that, so I just... How to open inventory in the Blackwell Legacy. Huh? Oh. Thanks, Google. <laughs> Dr. Donald Quentin, Bellevue Medical Hospital, New York, New York, West Blackwell. My name is Dr. Quentin and something something uh, recording bar and primary care physician here at Bellevue Hospital. I have seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I am sure we have lots to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quentin, MD. Okay, so how do I, there we go. And there's no option for the sound. <laughs> okay. Uh. I guess I get out this way. to the hospital to at least calm down a bit. 
Uh, that's not good. Locked. Whatever's back there, I can't get to it. Okay. You need a key to open it. Alright, why... Why is the power going out? I don't have anyone to call. I'm not stealing stuff from the hospital. No, I'm just... That's not what I meant. I guess this is old enough she doesn't have a cell phone. Huh. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes. Yes, I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Uh... Just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's... I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her. Or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation, like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? How? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. Mm. Oh? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize, I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No, I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. It's possible. But you never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I. But fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. 
She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to Auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. That just... Not... If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. Oh my God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. There's something more going on. So, there. I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Man, this morning just went from bad to worse. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. Favorite? And you know next to nothing about her. Did you have contact with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. So what exactly happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two-week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when new patients arrive. That makes sense. What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. 
Thanks. Uh-huh. And also, look at the floor here. It's like the tiles are missing. Let's go find Masharma. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. You shouldn't go in the dog park. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. Okay. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. Oh, puppy! I don't think so. No, you weren't going to- That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. It's an old-fashioned flip phone. <laughs> okay, I don't want to really bother her while she's playing music, but I don't think I have a choice. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Is Nishanti's I don't think so. Can't go over there. All right, here I go. Um, um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. I don't we'll get why she won't pet the dog. Okay, you can do this. Right. Um,. Calm down. Need to calm down. Well, that's obviously not working. Right. This is it. Hi. Um... Can I... Damn it. This is not working. I can't do this. I just can't. Huh. Well, I think I'm cutting the top off of options. Hmm. No, I can't do this. I just can't. I'll just have to wait until she's finished, or I don't know. I can't do this with all those people staring at me. I don't think so. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. The dog is following me. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you! The lady next door! Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Uh, That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? 
Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. She's so nice. <laughs> What's going on, Modi? Mm. I don't think that's a stress. Are you headache. all right? I mean, I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. He does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Oh, it was no problem at all. Do you want anything else? Milk or orange juice, perhaps? Um... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Um, that's unexpected, but she is really nice. Sure, maybe. No maybes. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Uh, oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rose Angela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a... Strange lady. You could have thanked her, though. Uh. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. I don't need to touch it. I know these plants are fake. I don't need to bother. I don't get reception anyway. That's not good. I'm not up for watching a movie. Besides, I've seen all of them a dozen times. Griff is fine where he is. Oh, his name is Griff. They're fine where they are. Okay. <sighs> I am just feeling so uninspired today. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel up to it. But today, it's just not happening. I know that feeling. Phone call? Okay. Hello? Rosangelina, hi. Hi, Bob. Thanks so much for submitting your last review on time. For once. Yeah. I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. College girl named Joanne Sherman. That's awful, but... You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Speak to some people on her floor. Get a word in with the roommate. Listen. Speak to the RA, too, and hey, see if you can score a picture of the girl. But I don't do that stuff. I write book reviews. Versatility. Time to get out of your comfort zone. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate him so much. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? Well, I guess it keeps me writing, but... Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter, sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. Oh. You can now use Rose's notebook. To access the notebook, move the cursor to the top of the screen to activate the inventory bar. Click the notes button. 
I think this is a good place to stop for now. Um, it's getting really interesting. And I think I know which direction it's heading in. It's pretty good so far. And she's a writer too, like me. <laughs> Although I haven't been able to get a job anywhere. She's got a job as a, on a paper at least. So I think this is where we're going to stop for now. I'll pick up next time uh, in a couple weeks. So thank you all for watching. And this is Brushfire Wind Dragon signing off.